Previously on Follow the Leader. This is going to be Davies kind of doing a little send-off show for himself as he's going to retire from the ghost hunting scene, or at least, you know, do a a long-term vacation from it, and uh, is looking to probably switch gears, maybe do a little lifestyle blogging or something like that. Who knows? It's still in the works. You know, uh, uh, new age type would call it electromagnetic pulse waves. Uh, am I, am I, I a I've new age ever, type? Is that, am that I a new point? age type? I, I have no, no idea. You got the beeps and the bloops and the uh, I mean, yeah, plastic we have... boxes. Uh-huh. Annabelle rolls her eyes so hard. Yeah, I'm going to look around for Marius. <laughs> Yeah, Annabelle's gonna look at Marius and be like, save me. Yeah, Marius, like, has a tablet that has all of their research on it, and they're just, like, scrolling through it, and it's just like, there's there's no such thing as thanatonic energy. This is, uh, this is just a basic manifestation. There's nothing in the house's in, uh, history to indicate uh, any large source of hauntings. This should be completely safe. Annabelle rolls her eyes and goes, I knew you could help me. (laughs) But I don't want safe. I want fun. Hector looks at the tablet computer with a disdainful eye and pulls out a battered leather journal and a stub of pencil and begins scribbling in it. Against one of the branches that is um, stretching out in front of you, there is a message carved into the the wood of the tree. So nice. I think it might be fun if it was just like a little greeting, but also the handwriting looks a little familiar. Nice, nice. Very good. Good, good shit. Oh, the message says, please call. And then there's a number if you need assistance. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Does it have the letterhead? Uh, this is just carved into the tree because if it was going to be a different way, oh, there was going right, to be a right, paper right. memo. But yeah, it just says. I mean, you know. it could also look like it was burned in. You know how you can do like wood carving, like wood burning. Ooh, yeah, like mm. a yeah, like a like a brand almost. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so instead okay, of which... uh, yeah, instead of being like handwritten carved, it could look like it was just like branded in, so it would have the letterhead logo. That's so fucking good. I think some moss has grown over that's named now like if so you can't quite make out what the letterhead <laughs> is yeah mm. you can maybe partially make out the word hotel but you can't see what the name of the hotel is so what annabelle initially heard was just like kind of just like the you know whispers Mm-hmm. And she's like trying to get a better listen so she's got the headphones she's got the microphone up against the crack Hector can probably hear it too and as she's as she's listening all of a sudden the sound of a rotary phone ringing just fucking spooks her and she almost falls off of Marius's shoulders mm-hmm. oh, I know what happens next after that yeah. Annabelle manages to, to catch herself and not fall, but Hector doesn't expect expects her to fall and jumps down to catch her and lands in the chalk circle. Is the ringing still happening or is it just one single ring? Uh, it cut off. Was it only Annabelle could hear it or could everyone hear it? I think it might. He- oh, Hector cool. also heard. Um, cool. Did it cut off when the floor broke? Mm. No. It, it, no, it, it, rang, it rang out like a phone buzzer. Because no one could answer it. We, we could pick up the phone. We now return to your game already in progress.
think Kari's gonna uh, make a note. I think there's a connecting door here. Like it's a, maybe it's a nice set of like, oh, it's one of those uh, partition folding doors, like nice wooden style folding mm. doors, and sort of like pushes them back as we go into the next room. And excuse me, while I go over the uh, basement because that is a basement, and that's fine. Oi, <laughs> another ten, oh, and another twelve. So, oh boy. As before, it's still emotional conflict, hidden agendas, envy, indecision, and betrayal. And indeed, it is a betrayal of trust. So that's fun. I think this room is a dining room. And it's a way bigger dining room than a family house would need. It's like a long table that could seat maybe 20 people. Oh my god. And at one end, there's like a, a china hutch with like a full set of crockery. Uh, but that's in a locked so it's clearly like the good china and it is uh set for a silver service like it's full on every place setting two different glasses big plate little plate full full shebang i think as we step in there uh, we go from like hardwood floors to like tiles like but nice like not like it's like marbly marble sort of tiles what's the state of the uh place settings did you say like, I, is it pristine or is it aged? I think, hmm, I think it looks tarnished in the way that you might see something in a museum. Tarnished, like old, but they're incredibly well kept. And I feel the room, it's got a higher ceiling in here too. This feels like a like a dining hall in the old school sense. And I think our footsteps and our and our voices like echo as we step into it. I think Kari lets out a low whistle that bounces around the space. Just like, fancy. Marius mutters under their breath, well, you wanted an invitation? Kari turns to look at them, like quirking an eyebrow. Just like, am I missing a thing? They um, cock their head toward the, the place setting and say, well, it doesn't seem as though we're unwelcome here. Despite the damages that may have been caused. I've read enough stories. No, you don't sit down and eat in strange places. Yes, this could be a fairy court. I certainly wasn't saying that we should partake, but perhaps we can continue to be optimistic given the state of this place. All right. Sort of like, I'm going to walk towards the uh, the China Hutch and have a see if any... Uh, any of them are stamped at all, or if it's anything that we might recognize. Yeah, is this is this a house's table set or a business? Nah. It's definitely way more than a domestic setting, for sure. Hector is looking around. He looks he looks like the table. He ignores the table, the dining set, uh, and is looking at cupboards. I don't think any of the china should have like a maker's mark on it. Can we tell if this is like porcelain china or bone china? We'd have to break open, I feel, the the case to know for sure. I think it's too hard to tell through the the glass of the china hutch. I mean, I also want to say, yes, it's bone china, but we don't know that yet. Is the is the hutch locked? Yes. But it's glass. Mm-hmm. You never leave your china cabinet open. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Uh, that's Hector's elbow going through the, the china hutch. That was the sound of Davy's soul shivering and dying, going, oh, God, why would you do what, that? What did we say about not upsetting the house? You're upsetting me. I think the house was already upset. Oh, boy, why would you do that? Hector hands uh, Marius one of the cups. <laughs> For analysis. For analysis? Of What? Marius just kind of like turns it over and then hands it hands it off to Kari and says, I mean it looks expensive enough, but this isn't exactly my purview, unlike some people, I do not claim to be a jack of all trades. Oh, I was gonna suggest a vandal, which you're also not, but you know. <sighs> Davy, can you 
See if you can get a vibe off this. That's your thing, right? Vibes. I'm, I'm not. He's harsh in my vibes right now. <laughs> I mean, I'll try. Just, just turn around and pretend he's not here. Oh, but I could hear it. I can hear the shattering just echoing in my ears. <sighs> you need to get more. No. No. Resilient mm -mm 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 vibes. I'm not listening to what you say. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Uh, what happens when he, Davy touches the china? I mean, it's probably just like I had been like thinking about the joke of him just starting to hum uh, like a, a waltz or something like that. But I liked actually then the idea of there is like some distant sound of music like after he takes the the china cup, and it's just kind Ooh. of like an after dinner coffee during a fancy dinner party type of thing. So there's like soft music playing in a different room, and just like the the sound of. Um, mumbled chatter and stuff like that but it's that very like after dinner coffee vibe mm -hmm. from like a nice party and he's humming that and then so he starts humming along with it to be like you know this is this is what he's hearing but it's also just kind of like who who hears it is it just davy yes. i think you only hear it when okay. you're touch if you're touching that horse and to be fair not everybody would like marius didn't hear anything touching it kari didn't I don't know if Hector handed it over quick enough mm -hmm. or starting to do that kind of vibe, but yeah. Keeping consistent with what we're discussing happens. I don't know if Annabelle would hear it if she touched it as well. I think she'd, she'd hear something else. Ooh, what does she hear? Hmm. Uh, depends on whether or not she actually touches it. Well, if Davy is humming along, she might touch it to see if she can catch the tune. She hears the record skipping. Mm. Ooh. Very good. And like the, the chatter has stopped for her. And it's just the sound of like the static and the skipping record. Mm. Mm -hmm. Good shit. Is the China also branded with the hotel stamp on the bottom or is it like personal? I think it's gotta be stamped with the, the same stamp that we saw on the tree. Yeah, I kind of like that. No, but like August said, there's no maker's mark. There's mm. only the mm -hmm. yeah. hotels. I think because because uh, Hector's been looking like under in cabinets and under placements and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's also a like itinerary or agenda that's like like you would get like hey like dinner is at six p.m. Really fancy there's... dinner parties would have like the menu yeah. option along with yeah. it and the schedule of events. Yeah. Like a scrap of paper with the letter, with the with the the head like burned off, mm -hmm. mm. but with the, the like like text still there. Oh, in which case I said like we can tell that the the mark on the crockery is the same mark, but I feel like it's illegible slightly for different reasons. Like uh, like the ink has bled over time, so you can't quite make out what it says. Mm -hmm. Or like how in a dream you can't read writing. That kind of a vibe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the King of Hearts. <laughs> oh, hearts. <Marius. laughs> I'm doing an eyebrow waggle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hearts is love, friendship, compromise, bonding, obsession, and the King is a personalized temptation. Huh. So, I think if we go off to the left. Mm -hmm. um there's like a gallery area i don't want to say it's like got a lot of like art hanging on the walls but it's it's like you know a place where there are a couple of pieces of art on display although not necessarily anything famous maybe some you know kind of taller shelves with uh some small statuettes i think this particular room has a really lush sort of carpet like it's obviously something that's very expensive, very thick. It's not, okay, not carpet as in like carpeting, but like a large area rug kind of thing over the hard, presumably hardwood floor. <sighs> I think Marius is like drawn to some of the shelves because the statuettes look a little bit odd. I'm trying to decide... I think maybe they, they pull out their tablet and, like, beckon everyone over. 
and uh, they sort through like some of you know some screenshots of like or or photos. Well, okay, I don't I don't know what would be the appropriate term, but like you know they they've got like some photos of like microfiche, and uh, they're comparing it to you know some of the photos in the the old clippings, comparing it to some of the statuary, and then you know they're obviously very deeply. Uh, deeply in their element, as uh, they say, fascinating. These, uh, well, they're not artifacts, but these pieces seem to be rather infamous in the local lore. Interesting that they should show up here. Well, what's the significance? Because August doesn't have uh, a very uh, specific picture. I just kind of want to extract uh, abstract Marius, Mm -hmm. you know, going on about, like, some local legend about a crafter from, like, you know, the 1800s and the the provenance of certain mildly locally famous pieces of craftsmanship and artwork, that kind of thing. It's honestly kind of dry, but at the very least, Kari and Davy would be used to this kind of thing. Mm Mm-hmm. Whether uh, Hector or Annabelle, well, Annabelle's probably heard Marius go off like this before, uh, but used to this. Yeah, yeah, but Annabelle's I feel been like... working with Hector, also to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, I feel like Hector or Annabelle may be the most likely to interrupt Marius's uh, chatter. Yeah, I think like Davy is mentally rewording it for a more coherent, uh, digestible version for the YouTube clip. <laughs> I think yeah. H- Hector is also simultaneously explaining different lore. Oh my god. Yes. <laughs> Annabelle's tuned both of them out. It's audio <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> yes. yes. Two people being like, yes, and and when you look, when you look at the frame And they're very here, droll the, uh, scientific the molding. explanation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Davy's tuned in to, to Marius's sort of rambling and is just like rescripting it and is just very much not like the, the sound of Hector is just kind of like background chatter that he's not paying attention to. <laughs> Whereas Kari is listening to Hector because Davy's got that covered. So she's yeah. like taking mental notes and just sort of like trying to look interested. Or should I say, Kari probably is interested, but some of the terminology might be going over his head. What interrupts us, though? Because obviously something has to interrupt us. I mean, is it a ringing phone? Or is it the sound, uh, my thought was the sound of a branch falling or something? Ooh, that's good. It's your, it's your scene next, Mab, so I like that. Okay, so what I want is actually kind of like a uh, like an L-shaped room. Um, yeah. And uh, so it would have the connecting door right here. And then also the other door that would have been beneath the stairway. Um, and then it could have its own winding stairway like up here to go up to the second floor, but like the back half uh, type mm. of stairway as opposed to like the big fancy one that would have been right in the foyer. That's my fancy yeah. door. In which case they have their little connecting door over here. Boop. And so I think uh, they hear like a, like it's not breaking, but it's the sound of branches like, creaking and groaning then let's see do 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 uh let me get a card before i continue on with that statement uh really you... quick yes i do want to say before we move on it just occurred to me marius definitely swipes oh one of God. the one of the pieces in the room <laughs> why are my partners both criminals and why am i so into it <laughs> how do you like so was it just place pa- paintings or were there other art pieces as well art pieces yeah there were like little figurines some some statuettes some paintings just mm-hmm. kind of general stuff like that maybe some uh, cla- uh collectible books on one yeah. shelf okay so yeah see so we hear like the creaking and groaning of a plant like of a tree movement, like if it was like in heavy wind 
or if it was just like growing in fast time type of thing. Um, or you like, if you think about when you've seen like Lord of the Rings, the sound that the Ents make as they're moving, that just creaking, groaning noise. Um, I drew the two of diamonds, diamonds, willpower, good luck, discovery, a second wind and greed with two being a hidden monster. So I think there is suddenly uh, appearing from around or like at the base of the stairs is going to be a whole new, just a new big tree. Just hello. It's a tree here suddenly that wasn't there before. Mm. Or we don't know if it was there before, but it certainly shouldn't have been growing inside. It's like, you know, something from the, the main body of the tree got blown over on a strong wind once after the tree fell in through the house and its little seeds sprouted. And suddenly there's a big tree here now, which the size it should be shouldn't have grown fast enough, but it's just... It's just there at the foot of the stairs. The roots are kind of like crawling up the stairs a little bit. And so you would have to like crawl over the roots in order to get to the staircase or like, you know, through the branches and stuff like that. But it's there and it's like sort of looks like it's blocking the way up or it's trying to. And it's like, no, don't go up there. Don't go up there. <laughs> do not you know, pursue. Do not pursue. And uh, so Davy's response is sort of like, well, how I wonder how this tree got here and is like kind of like investigating then like the joint between the 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 living room and this area which is kind of more just like a back room uh, like an informal dining room it's not the kitchen I think the kitchen's further off something that's a lot more casual and not as fancy like the stairway isn't as fancy as the front one is maybe like a breakfast room I like a breakfast nookie area yeah um and so he's like trying to like look between like the two spaces and being like conceivably how could a tree have gotten here and it's just like ooh, fascinating and then also you know taking his normal sort of measurements and readings that tree isn't like the one outside like it's a completely different species and it shouldn't even be growing in this area yeah exactly we're not really the right climate for pine Birds out of season. Trees where they shouldn't be. Blocking our progress. Well, it's only blocking if you're uh, flat-footed. And Davy just kind of like shimmies his way around the, the trunk of the tree and onto the staircase. And was like, see? No problems. Yeah, Hector, Hector just puts his hand on the railing and climbs over it. That works too. <sighs> Kari, do you want help with the cameras? Or are you going to go up the other staircase? I am disinclined to uh, split this party up, fun as it is. Uh, yeah, no, and starts passing up things to Davy. Yeah. Before uh, pulling themselves up in a similar way that uh, Hector did pretty easily. Like, Kari also doesn't miss arm day. Yeah. <laughs> Heck, yeah, Hector does it more just because he can reach over and just kind of clamber. There's not a lot yeah, of skill like, or strength involved, but he has the he has the height to just kind of step over. Yeah, Davy's yeah. also tall, whereas Kari is like stocky. Like I think I've described him as being like five foot six, five foot seven. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we'll offer a hand down. Okay, I swear I've had this conversation with Mac before. Uh, isn't going to offer help to Annabelle because Annabelle doesn't need it. Uh, but nope. he's going to offer a hand to Marius to help them up. <laughs> Y'all are going up the stairs? Like working our way around the, the tree to get onto this staircase. Okay, because Annabelle's just going to climb the fucking tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's just like a, it was easier to go. For some people are opting, it's easier to hop the banister. Whereas yeah, some people like Davy like ducked around the tree because it's apparently a pine tree and you can't really climb those easily. No, you can't, but yes. Annabelle is nothing if not determined. Yes. Oh my god, <laughs> she's gonna get so much sap in her hair. Oh, she yeah. is. It's gonna be hilarious. Marius uh, accepts Kari's help and like, kind of... Are they blushing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it. they're not graceful, but, you know, they, they make it up around the tree and then look at Annabelle in the tree and just shake their head fondly, but it's just one of those, oh my god, why? Do you expect anything else from me? She doesn't say that. 
she doesn't say that out loud, but she's kind of like grinning, like got what that did you eyebrow expect? tilt. <laughs> yeah. All right. And well, Mappy, you got the next one. Uh, Max, you got the next yeah. one. Where does this stairway um, go to? Stairway's up, right? It goes yes. to heaven. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Have we? Um, this is a question. I'm not saying that the kitchen and. Mm, Whoa, okay. What? Normal art rules of architecture <laughs> do not need to apply here. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, we can put the kitchen on the second floor. That's Ugh. funny. Oh, that just seems so illogical. I hate it. But also, yeah. I feel like that's <laughs> an in-character comment as we find ourselves going upstairs to a kitchen. Yeah, and that would make yes. sense on why there would be like a more informal room right here. Um, though having to make the food pass through the gallery is weird. We'll find a dumb way to... Somewhere. Um, um yeah, made her, maybe. Ooh, hoo, hoo, that would be good. What is, what is, what if this is a big kitchen? Like a, like a whole, like, like an industrial kitchen. Mm-hmm. Like, like a catering. hotel kind of kitchen. Like a hotel kind mm. of kitchen. Draw a card. King of spades. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Hell our yeah. our first spades, isn't it? Yeah. It is our first spade. Hey, Mac, what are spades? A- Physical conflict, suffering, doubt, fear, gr- danger, grief, alienation. King is a personalized temptation. Oh, Annabelle Lee. Annabelle Lee. So there's a phone on the wall, I'm assuming. Oh, yeah. There's always a phone in the kitchen because it might be one of the other. There is a, yes, there's a, um, yeah, like the staff phone. Yeah, yeah the staff absolutely. phone. And I think it rings. Um, ring, and ring, only I phone. can hear it. Can we all see the phone, but you can only, you're the only one who hears it ringing? Yes. Nice. It's the kind of, is this the kind of phone that doesn't have a dial or numbers on it? Like, yeah, I, it. I think it's just internal phone only. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Love that. Yeah. Because it, it would, it I would be it... from like the dining room to the kitchen being like, hey, we need more of this or whatever. Or the front yeah. desk. Mm-hmm. Or the yes. front desk. It's, it's basically a pager. Ring, ring, kitchen phone. Ring, ring, kitchen phone. Annabelle always, Annabelle is never one to walk away from a ringing phone. What I want to know is who's on the other side. I know. Go on, Zach. Uh, does Annabelle pick up the phone? I, obviously, yeah. <laughs> I just realized you've never met her, but. No. Yeah, that she does. Annabelle, you she pick does. up the phone uh, and a, night, a smooth voice comes <laughs> over the line and says, Oh, fuck off. <laughs> this is good. I'm sorry, but you're in an employees-only zone. I think you've lost your way a bit. Anima who kind of smirks a little bit and is like, by whose standards? Company policy? Or rather, by when's standards? Excuse me? The current policy standards of the hotel that you're in? No, no, no. I, I, no, I get that. I'm saying, what's current? Everyone else can hear this. Oh, you're doing a you're doing a, a Wens Waldo kind of thing, huh? <laughs> um, I'm just checking to make sure that my access is still correct because I understand that possibly in either the past or the future I wouldn't have employee access, but where I or when I am, I do. Kari meanwhile is like scooted up next and has like the. Uh, the mic like they're trying to see if he can pick up mm-hmm. whatever the ha- other half of the conversation is annabelle you hear a kind of soft chuckle on the other line mm-hmm. and the voice says well miss lee you're very clever if you'd like to discuss employment opportunities you can come and find us at the front desk she got any yawns and goes been there done that <laughs> I am sure I'll see you very soon. What was what was uh what was his name in House Verse? Uh, it was B Hatcher Service. Yeah, yeah. Was it was it Mister B Hatcher Service? Uh, I guess it would be would would be Mister Service if you were going by surname. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So she goes, she goes. I'm sure I'll be seeing you very soon, Mister Service. There's a beat. And then the voice says, have we met? And then cuts. Yeah. And that's Kari, like, looks at you. She's like, Belle, who was that? You'll see. That doesn't fill me with confidence, babe. You're being cryptic. 
Davy's just like, there is a secret going on and I'm not in on it. I want to be in on the secret. Oh, what's happening? I think Hector also looks concerned. If you know something, you should tell us. Share with the You should the at class. least tell me. Or the camera. Oh, I don't know it yet. Oh, boy. Oh, man. What does that mean? Oh, man. Oh, <laughs> Time's man. weird. She, like, kind of, like, wiggles her hand a little bit. And she goes, Time Time's kind of weird. Yeah. But, so, uh, yeah. Davy's just doing, like, a wiggle mm. dance. Like, the, I, it kind of looks like the I have to go pee dance, but it's also an excited child dance being like, oh, I want to know now, though. Uh. I was, I was going to say Annabelle is doing a very similar little <laughs> hopping thing, like, up and down, like, like a little stem thing that she's doing. Yeah. And she's like, well, that's, that's the extent of what I've got. <laughs> But how did you know what name to use? He's he's the front desk guy. Of course I was going to know his name. What is the that front mean? Desk guy for, a front, front desk, desk for guy for where? For what? <laughs> what? The Hexer looks deeply concerned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's Marius doing right now? Yeah, I need to know. <laughs> I think uh, they're kind of like hanging back a little bit and just like staring at Annabelle and just like what was that even about why did you feel the need to just talk into a random phone (laughs) oh professor where's your sense of adventure and I think we move into the next room yeah (laughs) (sighs) that's mine that's my room I got the two of clubs which is a physical conflict Suffering, doubt, fear, danger, grief, alienation, uh, and a hidden monster, which means that this is actually going to be a very short scene. Oh, dear. As we step out onto a long hallway. Mm. Five and a half minute hallway. Let's go! Filled with doors on each side, numbered doors, gilded uh, door plates, and at the far end, a window overlooking a pool. We have well and truly left the house behind. And Hector looks out and says, This is not a place we should be. This is not. This is not good. Uh, Because the door that we exited out of slams shut behind us, and it's a bedroom door. Hmm. Or I guess a room door. But there is a hidden monster. There is a sound... That kind of sounds like someone shouting, going through a filter, like a kind of musical filter where their their voice is, is transposed in multiple octaves to make a sort of chord sound. Um, just inarticulate anger as from the window in a wave towards us, the ceiling and floor begin to crunch together. I think Kari immediately without even thinking about it, shoves whatever he was carrying at the nearest person and shoulder checks the closest door off this hallway. Cool. You're a strong individual. I'm sure oh, it yeah, gives yeah, yeah. The, it, as easily as a normal door would give. Yep. Uh, and the, and the, we all rush through and the uh, hallway collapses behind us. We are in a stairwell goes up emergency exit baby it goes Mm -hmm. up a number of floors it goes down a number of floors we cannot figure out from here how many there are or what floor we're even on but that is what we're in it's one it was one of three floors right yes 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 but you know Mm, also we don't know which one we don't know okay i pulled the six of hearts hearts love friendship compromise bonding obsession and the six is a lie uncovered. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Okay, so we're in this little, like, the little landing between the stairs. Kari is, like, rubbing uh, his shoulder. She's like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Well, it was that or get eaten. Is that what was happening? Okay. Closest word I've got for it. Go to word as any, I suppose. We go, and I quickly like do a head count to make sure we are all there. Are we? Good question. Are we? 
I'm not going to say somebody is missing if nobody wants to be missing. Who do you think is missing? <laughs> who who would you like to be missing? Mac the knife at Citadel of Swords. I'm going to fight you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not saying that she's not there. Mm-hmm. Like, that's not, I wasn't going to say that. Mm-hmm. If you think it's interesting, she can be missing. She could not be there. I mean, but... it, it tracks, given the standards of what we're setting so far, that it's her if it's anybody is missing. Mm-hmm. But I don't want to make that choice for you. Oh, no, I think it's fun. Like, I wasn't going to say it necessarily, but like, mm-hmm. like I was thinking about it, but I wasn't going to say it. But I was like, uh-huh. okay, I need to know who you think is missing, because if you think she's missing, then she's missing. Okay, but here's the thing. I do a head count. Annabelle's missing, but there are enough people there. There's enough heads. Yeah. Annabelle's body is missing. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) No, and I think what it is, is this figure sort of like formed from what looks like concrete almost. And it's just sort of like stood next to us. Not saying anything yet, but we are clearly being watched by it. And I think, okay, I think I ask... I look at this figure and I sort of like push everybody back behind me a little bit and ask it, where are we? I don't think it says anything, Mm -hmm. but I think it gestures uh, because we said that the stairs go both up and down, right? Yeah. I think it gestures towards the uh, down area. Like, I'm not even sure. Is it is it formed enough to have, like, fingers to point? Or is it just, like, kind of generally extending an appendage in that direction? I think the latter. And I think... Because obviously we didn't hear the other side of the conversation. I think if we step past, there is a sign that says, in case of an emergency, proceed to the front desk. Because <laughs> I feel like the lie uncovered is that house... And how it's the face of something else. And we start making our way down the stairs. And um, Kari pulls out his cell and tries to call Annabelle. Um, you get the uh, the number you're trying to reach has been disconnected. Kari starts moving faster. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's seen. All right, August. Okay. So, we have been invited to go down the stairs, so that is where we're going to go. We are kind of running out of room. Uh, Well, there's layers here. Also, I can extend. I know, I'm not going to extend it further. It's fine. I'm going to... Zoom out, because you might be clipping off part of the bottom of the map as well. Just to. I am just about as far out as we can go, so... I'm torn. Let me let me draw the card before I decide. All right, four of spades. Oh, yeah. Physical this. conflict, suffering, doubt, fear, danger, grief, alienation. The four is a grim discovery. Um, I was originally thinking that the the next quote unquote room would just be the stairwell, but I I think it's more interesting if we make it out of the stairwell, uh, relatively unscathed. I don't think. Uh, I don't think our weird concrete friend follows us, largely because I think, like, you'd said it was just rooted to the floor, correct? Well, it sort of moved along the concrete, but I like the, the thought that as we transition to a different surface, like a different flooring, it can't follow because it's concrete. Mm-hmm. And this isn't. So I don't think, I think we, we go down the stairwell down to the bottom without incident, but we get down to the bottom and... Instead of an emergency exit, we end up in the whole t- hotel's lobby. Like, the the door that we exit is trussed up like an emergency exit, but we end up in the lobby anyway. I don't know. I'm kind of thinking our grim discovery might be an indication of Theo being here. Mm-hmm. I'm sad now. Yeah. But I'm not 100% sure what that is uh a portrait of the employee of the month Mm. (gasps) yikes fucking yes thank you zach so my other thought would have been like a tray with a note on it and just like being oh there's a message for you at the front desk but also employee of the month 
Because I... It can be both. Yeah. It can be both. But I do want to maybe stress that the Theo in this picture is older than Davy's Theo. Not a lot older, but you can definitely see that they're older. Mm -hmm. And I think there's something in the eyes that's very different that's probably very upsetting for Davy. I yeah, I think like Davy like exits the door and then just immediately stops right where he was and is just like staring at this portrait. It is just a long, long silence and he's just rooted he's now rooted to the ground and um like someone might just bump into him when they're trying to exit the the stairwell also. But he's just like literally just frozen there. I do want to say that I think the lobby is uh, devoid of uh, patrons or personnel. Mm. Um, Good. And I don't know if this is too much, but part of me wants to to say that we can kind of hear semi-charmed kind of life. But yes. it sounds like it's on an ancient like gramophone player. Ooh. So like Bioshock Infinite style anachronistic mm-hmm. music playing from a different room on a gramophone. Yes, exactly. Scott Bradley got his hands on this soundtrack, yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so where's this note then? Does like a, a different employee just like materialize, or because I like the thought that there's a, a there is a note like to go to the. Is it just desk. like on a on a little platter? Like on it, so there's there's a table like off to the side, like a tiny little table that would normally it holds a house phone and it holds a tray with a note on it. Mm-hmm. Oh, I like I I not to not to do this. I just think it's very fun if like someone pops out of a back room and she goes, "Oh, oh, Mister Jane, oh, there's a note for you on the table." Y'all don't know who she is, but the audience recognizes her as Meryl. Yes. I was just about to say, Davey knows who Meryl is, and then I realized, not in this universe. (laughs) Not in this universe. He probably probably feels like she looks familiar. Yeah. Mm. Love that. Love that. Because, you know, fails between worlds and shit. In that case, it doesn't feel weird that she knows his name, because it's like, oh, Mm -hmm. yeah, we know each other. Wait. Long pause. We know each other? She's probably gone before he can really mm-hmm. internalize yep. that. What I would love is to, for Davy to look at the note, read the note, and then look up. And as the camera pans, it's our first look at Theo's uh, portrait. Mm. Yes. Is it hanging over the table with the house phone and the note? Yeah, like yeah. we didn't see what had Davy spooked yeah. until that moment. Yes. Oh, yeah. Good shit. Oh, hey, Mab, it's your turn. <laughs> Yeah, but we're in the same room. No, in which case, there is going to be, in some hotels, like older hotels, there will be like a little room off to the side where there is like the phones, where you can have a private little phone conversation on like public phones type of thing, public house phones or pay phones or something like that. At my previous hotel, there was like a little nook where there was like three pay phones uh so that's like kind of little thing so it's like stepping into this room there is the little table with the house phone the note and the employee of the month portrait uh to give it a new little room but let's draw a card first a nine of hearts oh hearts perfect (laughs) so hearts love friendship compromise bonding and obsession and the nine is a noise from nowhere so in which case what does the note say it's august's scene it's my scene. No, it was August scene oh. where the note was. I can't remember who said what the note said. I, I don't know but who's left. No one the said note. anything. No about... one. We didn't. We say didn't say anything it, about what the note was. Note we just said there was a Theo, note from Mr. Okay. Jane, and I think we implied that it was from Theo because then we also introduced their picture. I was like, whoever wants to say what the note says. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking. thinking. Part of me wants to say that like the note is just like a transcription of Theo going, hello, hello, uh, mm, like they were was... at the end of those episodes. Mm, that's very good. Is it typewritten or handwritten? It's got to be handwritten, right? Like, Davy has to recognize Theo's handwriting. Yeah. So I think then, you know, Davy just kind of like sits down immediately on a very like plush chair that they have in that room and is just 
ashen faced and holding this piece of paper and then looks at the phone and picks up the phone and I guess we'll dial the phone number that was on the tree. Oh yeah. There we go. Does this uh connect him maybe to does Annabelle pick up the phone or does the front desk pick up the phone? Hmm. <laughs> or does B Hatcher? Could always flip for it, I guess. Yeah. I, I don't want it to be Theo. Not yet. No, no. I I no, was no, gonna no. say it's either no. gonna be it's gonna be it would be um B Hatcher or it would be Annabelle. Yeah. Because I think either of those would be good. I think flipping for it is is the move here. Okay. Sure. I think it's fun. That's who that's who tells who? Uh call it, Zach. That's it's Annabelle. All right. Yeah, I like that. So yeah, Davy just like sits down, stares at the piece of paper, then immediately is just like, Okay, well, weird. I don't like this at all. And so the noise from nowhere is who knows where Annabelle is physically currently at this moment. Yeah. But guess what? It's Max's turn to draw a new room where Annabelle can be and have this conversation uh-huh. on the phone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to, um, but it would be funny. It would be a nice like camera. I know. Cut. I think it's. I think it's good. I think it's good. Um, I'm gonna just. Uh, here's the thing. I'm gonna just draw a shape, mm-hmm. and it'll connect up later. Because I don't know where it is yet. Yep. <laughs> it's just there. Extra dimensional space. It's somewhere. This is this is the Penumbra Hotel. Yeah, basically. Jack of Hearts. That's good. That's very good. That's very good. Mm-hmm. Jack of Hearts. Hearts is love, friendship, compromise, bonding, obsession, and a jack mm-hmm. is a message received. I love oracles. Oracles are so good. <laughs> oracles are great. All right. So, Annabelle picks up the phone. Which Annabelle? There's, it's, it's just Annabelle. <laughs> she goes, hello? Wait, Annabelle? Hey. Wait, where are you? We lost you. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm up, I think. But I can't really tell. I won't lie. Where are you? Down, I guess. The lobby. Oh, okay. That's good. That's a good, that's a good lodestone. That's a good place to be. Uh, lobby tends to be pretty safe, I'd say. Annabelle, how long has it been? I don't know, five minutes? Okay. Just wanted to make sure. I don't know. It was just a little weird, you know, with with your other phone conversation and the hotel. Just making sure. Mm -hmm. You're good. Okay. Yeah. Davy's like, okay, okay. No, I'm good. There's a sound in the background. What's this sound? Someone brought up the pool. Yeah, I was going to say the pool. I think it's a splash. Yeah, a splash is good. Mm, A splash is good. My first first impulse was a typewriter. Oh, that's good too. But I was gonna say, uh, Annabelle would know that the uh, the pool is not open. Yeah, yeah, she knows the pool's not open. Yeah, there's a splash behind her, <laughs> or the sound of like multiple little splashes. She kind of goes, "Oh shit, uh, whatever." Are you okay? Not my problem. Are you? Yeah, I'm fine. I mean, where? <sighs> I don't like this at all. Okay, all right. This. This is weird, cause are you on your phone or did, or is are you in a what's happening? Um, mm. <sighs> can you come and find the lobby? Are you in the hotel? Can we find you? I don't think it's a good idea for you to find me. I think there's other people that you need to be finding. Yes, right now. Yes. Why are they here? Um. Oh boy. Okay. Huh. Okay. Uh, Kari, do you want to... Here, you take over, Kari, please. Sorry, Davy. Sorry for what? I know it sucks. What? What does? Never mind. Annabelle? Put Kari on the phone. Oh, boy. Oh, jeez. I'll hand the phone over to Kari. (laughs) Belle, I say with every ounce of love for you that I possess, what the fuck? Look... Everything's going to work out fine. Don't worry about it. Look, I'm going to trust you when you say that you're, if you tell me you're safe, that you're safe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm fine. All right. So we need to find someone. Mm-hmm. Davy knows who. All right. Davy's standing there with, like, arms over his stomach and, like, biting on his thumbnail. You might have better luck with Hector, actually. I hand the phone to Hector. <laughs> no, that's not what I... Okay. <laughs> Annabelle. Mm? What are you doing? Apparently, 
Actually, I'm playing phone tag with all of you, but that's no matter. Um, is there a bell on the desk? Of course. See, just just ring it. See who see who comes. They should be able to help you get a map. Annabelle, you're being unnecessarily flippant again, inappropriately so. For once, I'm going to agree with him. I'm always unnecessarily flippant. That doesn't make it less unsettling. Hmm. Good, that's the notes I'm trying to hit. And she hangs up. <laughs> <sighs> People say I'm the weird one. <laughs> Uh, Wait, what did he just say? It's a, it's, people say I'm the weird one. <laughs> uh, as he goes to um, just ring the bell. And uh, a moment later, a young woman uh, with dark uh, straight hair that falls to her shoulders with large glasses, though not quite as large as Hector's, but round. Mm-hmm. Um, Actors are square. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks like that kind of pale that just like not enough sunlight. Not in the vampire sense, just like somebody that spends a lot of time indoors. And looks at you and goes, Hello, how can I... Hector, what the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> and it is... Uh, Laura. Laura, but alive in a way that you have never seen her before. Timelines are collapsing. Causality is falling in on itself. You sound like a bad episode of Quantum Leap. There are no bad episodes of Quantum Leap. <laughs> Disagree. <laughs> Disagree. Well, hello, Laura. You're looking very lively today. Zach, you are inaudible. <laughs> hello, Laura. You're looking very lively today. Yeah. Um weird huh yes all of this is weird none of this is normal no i agree what do you need you rang the bell i'm here yes i cannot believe i'm still following your ass around i mean i'm Mm -hmm. i don't know mr jane we are here to find something or someone yeah theo delaney why do you need to speak to the manager? Because they're my partner. They were, last I checked. Mm. Voice rising up into a weird squeak. Okay. Well, I may. It's August, and I just wanted to thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed us, please consider leaving a rating on your podcast platform of choice, telling your friends about us, or tweeting about us using the FTLcast hashtag. We are also part of a nonprofit podcasting guild called Standing Stones Productions. We do a variety of shows, including The Room Where It Happened and Dumb Kids Playing Hero, two actual play shows, and a Steven Universe discussion podcast called Gay Space Rocks. We also do live streams at twitch.tv slash standingstonesprod. You can keep up with everything that we do on Twitter at stones underscore standing. Unfortunately, Standing Stones was already taken. Your support means a lot. Thanks again! <laughs>